Hey folks, welcome back. Today we will talk about price elasticity. We'll focus on demand and supply later. But in the meantime, we can focus on what the word elasticity means when there's a price change. So again, we want to measure the response of consumers when there is an increase or decrease in price. We now know the what. So when price increases, consumers will consume less. When price decrease, consumers will consume more. But now we want to know how fast the response or how slow the response is when there is a price change. And now you can kind of see that we are able to measure the when. When will you consume more when there is a price decrease? When will you consume less when there's a price increase? And we can denote price elasticity as big E sub P. Now we do know that the numbers we are going to calculate will have a range between zero and infinity, which means we can never ever have price elasticity that is negative because it starts at zero and ends in infinity. Now the second rule we have to follow is kind of more like a guideline of exactly what the numbers represent. If we get a number, price elasticity that is greater than one, we can call this elastic, which means your response is fast. And the higher the number, one, 100, 1,000, 1 million, the faster the response you will have as a consumer. Next, if we have a number that is equal to one, we can call this unit elastic which means your response is indifferent. You're kind of more like, ah, whatever, when the price of a good changes. And lastly, when we have a number that is less than one, we can call this inelastic, which means your response is slow. As the price of a good increase, you should consume less, but you're consuming less at a slower rate. So make sure to keep in mind what each of these three represents. Now I want to show you two extreme examples of price elasticity. The first one we're going to focus is when E sub P equals zero. We can call this perfectly inelastic. Perfectly inelastic. And this is shown on a graph where we can use the x-axis to represent quantity of goods, the y-axis to represent the price of goods, and when we have zero, a perfectly inelastic curve, we're gonna have a vertical curve. Now, look at this graph and try to picture what this is trying to imply. Let's put on the x-axis one, one good of whatever good you want to think about. And look at the y-axis. This tells us that no matter the price, you are gonna consume that good. If the price is $5, you're gonna buy one. If the price is $10, you're gonna buy one. If the price is $100, you're gonna buy one. That is perfectly inelastic. Although there really is no example today of a good that is perfectly inelastic, we do see how there are goods that could be highly inelastic. For example, gasoline is highly inelastic because if gas prices today were to increase $3, $5, $7, in the short run, we will still consume gasoline. Why? Because we cannot substitute gasoline for something else in our vehicles. That's why. So when goods are not easily substitutable, then that usually means it is highly inelastic. Another example of something that is also highly inelastic is think about, let's say, Super Bowl tickets, World Series tickets. When we see Super Bowl tickets go on sale, people can then resell it at a much higher price, two times, three times, five times the actual face value. Those tickets, which you cannot substitute for another Super Bowl, because it only happens once a year, is highly inelastic. 
The other example I want to show you is when we have e sub p, which equals infinity. And we can call this perfectly elastic. Elastic. Now, graphically, we can show that on the consumer market, where we have quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. But now we're going to have a horizontal curve. Now, this represents a perfectly elastic graph where we can put here on the y-axis $20. This tells you that you know the value of the good and you are not willing to pay more than $20 for this good. For example, if I were to sell you a gift card at Subway and the Subway has a value of $20, but because you are a special student of mine, I'm going to sell you the gift card for $25. Would you buy it? I would say no, because you know the actual value of the gift card. And that becomes perfectly elastic. So when we know the value, the price of a good, then we know that that good is highly elastic. Or we could say, too, is when there are goods that could easily be substituted for something else, those goods are also highly elastic. For example, uh, look at burgers. You have many options for hamburgers from Burger King, McDonald's, Jack in the Box, and even Carl's Jr., When any of these franchises increase price for its hamburgers, you could easily substitute for a Whopper, for a Big Mac, for a Jumbo Jack, for a Superstar. So hamburgers would be, in this case, highly elastic. And that concludes price elasticity.